Okay, I guess I'm not the only one that wanted badly to turn this Milwaukee M12 mini cutoff saw tool into a miniature sort of circular saw or at least run uh, one of these types of blades with carbide insert teeth and get into some soft materials like plastics, pla uh, cardboard, um, wood, obviously. Um, it may be odd to some of you that I would want to cut that type of thing, but um, that's sort of how things go around here. What you can have when you buy one of these is anything that Milwaukee makes specifically for it, three inches in diameter, three-eighths of an inch arbor hole. This is the diamond blade. They have other abrasive type wheels, and that's basically everything that's three inch is from them. Uh, almost nobody else really supplies the three inch um, cutting discs or anything like that. And I think they did that intentionally. Uh, you only have a little bit more room right before the guard, and then as soon as you go to three and a half and stuff like that, they don't fit in here, and that's when you can get into, again, for like a prosy saw, or not prosy, um, uh, like a door jam saw, or um, pow, 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 what is it I'm trying to talk, oh, Dremel makes one, or the Multimaster, or whatever, I don't know, some of these, one of these snazzy names, uh, but those blades won't fit in this tool, super frustrating, I'm sure, if you're watching this video, you tried that like I did, um, or at least did the research to find out, I tried, because I wanted to, again, I wanted to cut on wood and cardboard, I tried a slitting saw for a milling machine, I, you could probably get any size in the world if you really uh, went looking around, I went to McMaster Car, I had actually owned this already, but after I failed with this, I checked McMaster Car, and this is sort of the standard smallest size, it's uh, three inches as well, it has teeth on there, you can see, um, quite a few of them. It's 20, 20 thousandths of an inch thick, and so I needed, uh, it has a half inch hole in there. So while it was going to fit, it was going to wander all around. So you can buy half inch to three eighths of an inch Arbor adapters, which I did, um, but I shipped them and I was impatient. So before they showed up, I made one here. This the part I'm holding is 5 eighths of an inch, which really isn't super important. Um, I just wanted a shoulder, and then the outside of the shoulder is half, and obviously the hole is 3 eighths, and so that's how I was able, and oh, the step, the shoulder itself, its height, you know, up from there is uh, 20 thousandths of an inch, so that, you know, if it with the blade. I had some success. It wants to wander a lot because it's so thin, and uh, it also got pretty hot because of the high speed RPMs here, and the very high amount of teeth is just a lot of friction. Uh, same problem I had with the razor blade, which was from a fabric cutting razor trying to solve this problem. Anyway, um, I was able to get this. Uh, Proxen 2Xs. Um, it was listed on Home Depot. It's a 3 and 3 8 inch diameter with a 10 millimeter arbor hole and so I had to go back and make another little adapter just turn these out of aluminum on, a, on the lathe I know not everybody has that um, I'll show you the drawing at the end and um, you guys can take a snapshot of it or something and uh, ask the machine I'm sure it wouldn't cost much at the machine shop if you could wait a few days uh, 20 bucks or something but anyway there's a 3 8 hole and then a 10 millimeter diameter shoulder that's 40 thousandths of an inch thick because that's what the thickness of this was and then a 5 8 back surface again um, and so if I just press him in to the blade he sticks in there and then you got to have your old um, backer washer here sorry I only have the one hand it's not a real high-tech YouTube channel I'm running here I mean it is but not in the um, production value anyway so then now it'll slip like line to line I don't know why this has to give me trouble right now it works like a charm folks there it is and uh, Put that nut on there, and then it's lefty tighty, righty loosey for this reverse thread, and um, you know a little bit of an Allen key here, and then uh, you know this here. You can pin it with the button that they put on there, and when that falls into place, put a little torque on there, and there you go. Obviously, put the shoe on there um that comes with the tool and then you have yourself a depth uh arrange you know setting control and it makes more of a circular saw that has a handy dandy little sawdust evacuation succione attachmente uh but that's really you can reverse the spinning of the saw so the other direction obviously won't cut at all and you want to plan out those things accordingly 
but that works like a charm and uh, it didn't cost me anything and it likely wouldn't cost you a lot if it was worth it to you than it is and if it isn't then forget it here's the drawing for that particular proxen blade and i'll throw links in the description of the video all right you're welcome if you uh thought that was a lot of work and or recognize that it was a lot of work to figure out and uh, appreciate it go ahead and like and subscribe thanks for watching we'll see you